Slavery still exists. In fact, there are more people in slavery today than at any other time in history. Corruption, discrimination, crime and poverty have created a simple but devastating truth. Slaves are cheap and disposable. This is not some faraway problem. Modern slavery casts a long shadow that reaches across the globe. It's in every country. Like a disease, it crosses borders and infects our businesses, our retailers and our homes. Even the device you're watching this on could be tainted by slavery. Whether it's children trafficked in West Africa to pick cocoa for chocolate, or villagers forced at gunpoint to dig for minerals used in electronics, or child slaves forced to work long hours making footwear in Brazil. Right now, in the 21st century, tens of millions of people are forced to work against their will, under threat, and many are contributing to the products we buy. Supply chains can be complex. A global business may have thousands of suppliers who deal with many producers, manufacturers, and contractors. But the way our businesses and retailers operate can encourage the use of slave labor. With increasing consumer demands, suppliers struggling to fulfill sudden large orders with short delivery times may turn to unregulated subcontractors, or company buyers negotiating ever low prices for goods in ever faster time may force manufacturers to seek ever cheaper raw materials and cut corners to secure immediately available labor. In both cases, the likelihood of slave labor entering the supply chain is greatly increased. Take for example the cotton industry. Cotton is found in 40% of textiles. There are 300 million cotton farmers in 80 countries and millions more work in factories. It is known that people are in slavery at every stage of cotton production. From germination, planting, weeding, harvesting, spinning, and finally in the cut, make and trim to produce the clothes you wear. Your new t-shirt may have been a bargain, but were doctors dragged from the bedside of sick patients and forced under threat of penalty to harvest the cotton for up to 70 hours a week? This is a reality for millions of Uzbek citizens who are forced out of their homes and jobs to work in the cotton fields each year. Those who speak out against it risk being detained and tortured. That's because the entire process of cotton production is controlled by the government, and it's the government who profits while citizens suffer. And Uzbekistan is one of the largest exporters of cotton in the world. We buy huge quantities of clothes and other cotton products, but do we ask if they're produced ethically? Were enslaved young women involved in spinning the cotton into thread in Bangladesh? Or was the embroidery done by child slaves in appalling conditions in Delhi? The fact is, consumers, like you and me, often have no idea of the human cost of our clothing. And with over $150 billion being made each year from slave labor, the problem will not go away by itself. The good news is that as consumers, we have the power to make a difference. Ask your favorite brands if they can guarantee that there is no slavery in their supply chain. Ask what they know about the working conditions for those producing their goods. Have they publicly committed to eliminate forced and child labor at all levels of their supply chain? What measures have they got in place to identify slavery in their supply chains? And what happens when they find it? Put pressure on politicians too. Write to them, insisting they push for better enforcement of existing laws and for new laws that ensure companies are meeting their responsibilities to end slave labor.